Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here, and welcome to our Google Tag Manager tutorial. In this video, we're going to be talking about how Google Tag Manager works. We're going to be using terminology like tags, triggers, and variables, and we're going to talk about how they all three need to play together in order to get things to work properly on your website. Because even though Google Tag Manager is all about tags, especially with the word tag in the title of the program, if you don't have triggers in place to control where these tags go and whether they're going to go on all pages or just some pages on your website, or if they're going to be done by certain actions that don't really matter what page they're on, and also you need variables to make this whole thing scalable. And finally, we're going to talk about how do you deploy these tags onto your website. Because you might think that you just put a tag on there, put some rules in place, and you're suddenly going to have it live on your site. But the truth is you need to make sure you preview all these changes before they go live. Otherwise, you might be pushing the tags that do analytics and marketing tracking all the way out to your live customers when you're not ready for it yet. So you need to preview before you publish with Google Tag Manager, and we're going to talk to you about exactly how that works right inside of this video. So listen up if you want to know how Google Tag Manager works. Let's talk about how Google Tag Manager works. In this part of the tutorial, I want to talk about tags, which is the analytics or marketing scripts you put on your website. I want to talk about triggers, aka the rules for how those tags fire. I want to talk about variables, aka macros, which are basically any type of dynamic content you want to put into your website tracking experience. And finally, preview and publishing your results. So tags in Google Tag Manager. The glory of Google Tag Manager is in these tag templates. These tag templates are predefined templates for basically replacing the JavaScript provided by many, many, many vendors. And so you go through these tag templates and you can choose what you want to track right inside of Google Tag Manager. Now each of these tag templates requires some kind of input in order to make them work properly. It can be anything from taking your Google Analytics tag and choosing a tracking ID, or actually more realistically a Google Analytics settings variable. Or it can be something like the Bing Ads system, which requires you to put in your tag ID within Bing Ads. So every system requires some type of input in order for these tag templates to work. But if you notice here, I'm not asking you to put code in there at all. I'm just telling you that you can take a tag template, you can put in your tag ID, set up when it fires, which is a trigger, and these things are going to be live on your website whenever that page is loaded or whenever that trigger event happens. Tag templates do most of the work in GTM, but that doesn't mean that you're completely off the hook. You need to set up some kind of trigger for when those tags are going to fire. Now a tag can't fire without rules that define when it fires. And the most basic trigger that you have, the only default one that's available in your GTM account, is to fire that tag on all pages. It's called the all pages trigger, and every single time a page finishes loading, GTM will send that tag up to the sky and it will send it to the different tracking partners that you have a template installed for. But beyond that, there are many built-in triggers that you can use as well. Now there's not as many triggers as there are built-in tag templates, but as you can see, there's quite a few things you can do. You can track when somebody clicks, you can track when a YouTube video is played, you can set up your own custom events, you can even do stuff based on the DOM which is the document object model, whenever the page finishes loading, which is DOM ready, you can say I want to do something whenever the page is visible, whenever the HTML is visible. So there's all kinds of triggers that are built in and there's all kinds of things you can do and each trigger has its own set of rules for firing tags. As you can see here, we're looking at the YouTube video trigger. I can trigger whenever a video starts, whenever it's completed, pausing, seeking, buffering, and I can even set it up that at certain times in the progress of the video, a tag ends up firing. And finally, the third part of the triangle with Google Tag Manager is variables. Variables are what make the values in your tags and your triggers dynamic. And dynamic variables are needed if you want to scale your tag management. Now the most basic variable you have is for your Google Analytics ID. So you can create a constant and assign it the value of your Google Analytics UA ID, and then that's going to be with you forever. And not only that, but there's several built-in variables in your GTM account as well. If you look here, we have stuff around scrolling, we have stuff around videos, we have stuff around when people click on the website. Basically, anything that happens within a page of your website, there's a variable that you can use for it, and those variables allow you to pull in dynamic values that you can assign to your various tags. Google provides you with many automatic variables based on user behavior. 
And not only that, but there's also a way that you can use a data layer to communicate with your website. As you can see here, I'm pushing in data from my own website into Google Tag Manager that we can use to make our tags more meaningful. Here's the value proposition of a data layer variable. It can pass dynamic values from your content management system, your backend systems, or your e-commerce platform into Google Tag Manager, and then these variables can dynamically pass values into your tags. And so that works really nicely because now you're creating one tag template that can take on any number of values that you input based on what's happening on your website. Now this is a giant value proposition when you think about it. Basically taking anything from your website, your content management system, your e-commerce platform, whatever it is, and you can pass it into a tag and you can push it in through Google Tag Manager and these tag templates into your various advertising platforms like Twitter, LinkedIn, Bing, Google AdWords, anything that's out there. And so if you have a website that's selling products online, once that sale happens, you can push the fact that the sale happened to all your different advertising systems in one fell swoop. And it's amazing that you can do that because now you're not asking somebody to write custom code for each of these different platforms to fire these triggers. You're not messing with the difference between JavaScript and your backend language. It's all being done in this translated data layer. Now the cool thing here is that this is the type of project that used to take a consultant ten dollars to $20,000 worth of resources to figure out how to make it work with your content management system, how to get these tags to fire, and then once the tags changed, it would be another couple thousand dollars just to maintain them. And now with the data layer in Google Tag Manager, this is something that can just be set up one time and passed into your tags over and over again. And then in Google Tag Manager, once you have your tags in place, you want to preview and publish your tags. So your tags, triggers, and variables, they all work in harmony together. It's like a perfect triangle of things that you need. You need a tag because that's what the vendors want for you. You need a trigger, which sets up the rules for when that tag should be firing. And finally, you need variables to make these things dynamic so you don't have 8,000 tags in your site whenever you want to track something new. You need the dynamic nature of them, and that's why we need all these things to work together. But before you put them on your website, you need to make sure that they're working properly. And that's why, before you publish, be sure to preview. So within Google Tag Manager, you can see there's a blue submit button, and then there's a little bit grayer preview button. If you hit that preview button, and you're going to want to hit that preview button well before you click on submit, it's going to allow you to test whether or not your tags are working properly in your site. And so once you're in preview mode, you can go to your site and you can preview these tags to make sure that they're firing properly. So as you can see here on my site, there's two tags that are fired. One is the base Google Analytics, and another one is called GA Event Scroll Tracking, and it's saying that both of these things fired one time when the page loaded. But there are many tags that did not fire on the page. So button clicks didn't get fired, downloads, form tracking, video plays, because nobody has done these things yet. And so if I want to test if these tags are working or not, I can go to the website, I can click on the button, and then I can see if that fires the tag. And I can do this all in preview mode without affecting all the visitors to my website. And even better, if you're testing Google Analytics, you can use the real-time reports to make sure that your activity is being logged properly. So I'm recording this in Minneapolis, and as you can see here, I was verifying that everything I was doing was working properly on the site, and I was able to verify it right through Google Tag Manager. And when you're ready to go, you can deploy your tags. So this is what happens when you click on Publish. It asks you to publish and create a version. You want to make sure that you give it a nice naming convention to help people understand what you did. And so in this case, I have a version name. We added the GA settings variable. And then give it a very, very deep description as to what you did during this round so everybody can see what the value was of publishing that version of your container. And let me emphasize that again. Be very thorough with your naming convention. So we hope that you enjoyed this GTM tutorial. And if you did enjoy it, Leave a comment with your biggest GTM question that you have for us. And if you want to see that GTM migration guide, make sure you leave a comment there as well. Mm -hmm.